All right, we got this movie called Love Again. So basically you got this couple with Mira and John. Now Mira likes to draw these nice little pictures of her children and stuff like that. She's just working on the art. Meanwhile, John does, I'm not sure exactly what John's doing. But he met up with Mira, he leaves out of the cafe, he's about to go do something, but then unfortunately he gets ends up getting hit by a drunk driver and ends up getting killed. Two years later, we find out Mira's been living with her parents or whatever like that, and her uh, sister Susie is trying to get her to come back to the city. And we find out before John was killed, she had wrote a lot of these children's books or whatever like that. But obviously, the stuff she's been, you know, printing up pictures have been like, you know, depressing and what as of late. Susie somehow convinces Mira to come back to the city so they can live with each other, you know what I'm saying? Then we got this guy by the name of Rob. So the thing with Rob is he don't believe in love no more because he was supposed to be getting married, but then his uh, wife, Elizabeth, whatever, right before he's about to become a wife, she ends up dishing him at the altar. So he works at this journalism company and his like two best friends, this dude named Billy and his girl named Lisa. So apparently they're big time because their boss is going to have him doing interviews with Celine Dion. Now we find out that Mira actually loved the opera because uh, John gave her this one seat, one uh, record or whatever like that. And he used to play it for her every night or whatever. But John's mom had gave Mira this box or whatever like that. I guess it's like his belongings or whatever, but she hasn't opened it in literally two years. She goes through it, finds the, uh, the record, finds a bunch of clothes or whatever. Then she finds the a, a engagement ring that he was going to propose to her to, you know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, he didn't have the chance to do it because he got hit by a daggone car. So, you know. You know, I just thought about, this is not even a horror movie. It's a love movie. And the black guy still died in the first five minutes. But anyway... She always ends up going to this cafe, but she goes with her sister Susie, whatever like that. And they talk to this bartender, this dude by the name of uh, JJ. I don't know. But he kind of feels where Mira's coming from because he had lost his wife this, almost the same way. He tells her when he's feeling down, you know what I'm saying? He gets a glass of wine. And he just starts talking like he's actually still talking to her or whatever like that, right? So Mira, when she goes in the house, she pours a glass of wine and she starts texting John's old number, right? Meanwhile, Rob is sitting in the house watching uh, Knicks games or whatever like that. And all of a sudden, lights start flickering, going in and out or whatever. The power went out for a second or whatever like that. But here's the crazy thing. The text messages that Mira keeps sending to John's old phone are actually going to Rob's work phone. So I'm thinking to myself, like, wait a minute. She probably hasn't texted that phone in two years, but she's texting all this intimate stuff that she still wants to say to John, even though he's not here, but it's still going to, like, Rob's work phone number. So later on the next day, Rob ends up having an interview with Celine Dion herself. And she could tell he's sad or whatever like that. Then before you know it, they start having talks about loves and relationships and things of that matter. The thing is, he didn't even get the interview. They would just talk about love and stuff. But she really wants to see what's going on with him. And then she breaks down to the fact that, you know, her husband, Renee, had passed away or whatever like that. So everybody has somebody they love, but has some unfortunate accidents happen to their significant others. So Rob goes back to the workplace. And for some strange reason, he thinks Lisa's the one that's texted. So he confronts her about it. She's like, uh, no, I wouldn't write this shit. This is depressing. So meanwhile, while all this is going down, Susie is trying to get Mira to go back on dates and do stuff like that. So it's like, all right. So Mira just eventually falls into it. She's like, all right, fine. I'll just go on one of these daggone dates just to please you. So she's texting John again, which obviously she doesn't know she's texting Rob. And ends up giving her the location of where she's going to be at for her date. Rob ends up going with Billy to meet her there to see if he can actually figure out who this person is. Mira ends up showing up at the date and ends up talking to this muscle bound dude. But obviously he doesn't know if it's her or not. They think it's a scammer or something or whatever like that. And Billy thinks it's some dude that's just looking at him that just bought drinks. So Billy is apparently gay. He's going to see what's up with the dude. Mira ends up leaving out with the muscle bound dude thinking everything's going all good with the date. But when they get in the car, he appears to be trying to move all fast. And Mira ain't trying to have that shit. So she's like, all right, get the fuck out of the car. So it gets to the point she's just tired of dating. And then on top of that, she stops doing text messages. So Rob is feeling all sad, trying to figure out who this person is. But then she starts texting again. And she starts quoting these lines. And we're like, lines from what? Lines from... Orpheus and something. By my mind, Lisa has to help Rob break it down. It's a reference for like the opera. So he goes to the opera trying to find her. Of course, he never finds her, but even more so, you know what I'm saying? He's starting to learn more about the opera. So like he's waiting down at one point in time. And all of a sudden, Mira just starts walking down the steps. They lock eyes. They just start talking randomly, just have a genuine conversation. And he ends up getting the number. He gets the number on his personal cell phone indicating that it is her number. But the problem is with him is he's going to be able to have legit conversations with her. But of course, She's been texting him on the work phone that she don't know about. You know what I'm saying? And he's already figured out some things. He was at home on computer looking her up. You know what I'm saying? Finding out about the children's book that she done made. And then he looks up the dude, John, and finds out about John dying two years ago. So obviously he's feeling messed up about the situation, about having all this information on her. But according to them, they had just met. So, you know what I'm saying? And of course, she still hasn't gotten over John, which she'll probably never get over John. I mean, just saying. But it gets to a point, she actually calls him at work or whatever like that, and he's so cringe trying to ask her on a date. By my eyes, they get the date, they end up eating hamburgers or cheeseburgers at the spot, the Roxy spot that she always goes to. 
And the days go along great. End up dancing the night away. They end up park all the entire morning. Then we get to the point where Rob is going to be talking to Celine Dion again. Now, the thing is, she's supposed to be doing this concert or whatever like that, but she's going to start doing it at Madison Square Garden. But instead of really getting another interview again, you know what I'm saying? He starts talking to her about his dilemma. So he has Celine Dion actually call her up. Because apparently Celine Dion's a fan of Mira's books because she reads it to all three of her children, right? And she basically wants her to do some cover art for a tour. So obviously, you know what I'm saying? She sliced up, not realizing that Rob was the one that influenced that decision. Now, before this, they went on a date. Now, both of them can't cook. They tried to cook something, and then they ended up just eating Cinnamon Toast Crunch together, drinking wine, talking about their dreams. But then the mirror ended up falling asleep on him. So she ends up carrying her back to her bed, tucks her in and all that stuff, and he ends up sleeping on the couch. All of a sudden, Susie comes home. Susie's about to beat this man, but then realizes it's Rob. It's like, oh, you're the guy. Okay. Next thing you know, Rob and Susie up early in the morning just drinking coffee and donuts and whatnot. Mira says she'll be right back. She said, Rob, you just stay here. I got to go to my, my soul meeting or whatever like that. But basically, she just goes in the car and starts crying because she's thinking about John again. All right, now back to current events, because after the situation with Celine Dion and being able to make cover art for her or whatever like that, she's so happy and everything. Mira and Rob end up playing basketball because that's something Rob likes to do. He likes watching basketball playing, and apparently she likes to, too. There was some loving basketball moment. They ended up getting a kiss, and you know what happened after that. He ended up giving that a business. So afterwards, he's like, damn, I got to be at the job in like 15 minutes. So he's going to take a shower, whatever like that, right? Now I'm thinking to myself throughout the time, is she going to see the text messages on his phone, his work phone? Turns out she sees it pop up on his fucking computer. I'm like, seriously, dude. So obviously at this point, she thinks he's a liar and an asshole and everything like that. And she ends up leaving out mad. So he don't know what to do. He can't text her, call her, nothing. So it gets to a point he's just frustrated. He's at the job, whatever like that. And... Lisa and Billy are trying to like console him and everything, trying to make sure everything good. Then he gets an idea. So apparently his boss early in the day was trying to figure out what are these text messages coming through from, hey, you got some Celine Dion stuff, whatever like that, because apparently he was being able to read the text messages through the work phone. And then he tells him like, oh, these are just lyrics for uh, ne- Celine Dion's next new song or whatever like that. So his boss believes the shit. Come to find out, Rob actually makes a column talk about Texas to, Mar- to, to, to Mirror. And it's a column about certain text messages that he has sent to her, not knowing she not knowing you're sending her or whatever like that. But then he puts his heartfelt speech like halfway through it. He don't even know if that shit was going to work. And he damn near almost risked his job to do it. But his boss is like fake chewing him out or whatever like that to make it seem like he doesn't want uh, anybody else doing this stuff. So he's like fake chewing him out. But he's really just congratulating him like, yo, well done. You know what I'm saying? So basically, she goes to a Roxy spot with Susie and then she has to get the advice from JJ. Apparently, he's got a new woman in his life. So there you go. Then she has to talk with John one more time or assuming that she's having this talk and she's finally trying to let go, I guess. So then Rob was waiting to depart with flowers, hopefully f- figuring out if Mira was going to show up. But apparently, oh, obviously she didn't show up. He ends up going back to the, re- to the his job, whatever. At least it gives him an idea to go back to the opera. So he ends up going to the opera spot, but it's closed or whatever like that. So then he's just like walking around on the side, just thinking to himself that he lost. And all of a sudden, Mira just pops up from behind him. And she's like, look, if we're going to keep this going, no more lies, none of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to learn how to cook. <laughs> and basically, you get the kissing right in the middle of the street. And that's the end of the movie. Happy, dappy, lovey, w all that shit. And then the credits roll and Celine Dion's doing her concert. So there you go. Happy movie. Happy times for everybody. Love again on Netflix. Check it out.